Good morning and welcome everybody to our next web talk on photonic integrated circuits on Wednesday morning. Um, my name is Dirk Kalinowski. I try to bring you today to the next, uh, for the next hour through this uh, web talk. That's today our fourth web talk on photonic integrated circuits. Today, the focus will be on fiber optic sensing applications. Uh, for this, we've got today and we welcome our speaker for this activity and coming to our agenda, Yelma Vida from uh, Photon First. I would say a few words. Um, to him at the beginning to introduce you, but first we will start uh, with our lead partner and some words of welcome and an introduction to our op 4 nwe project. Today it is given by Maria Trajkovic from the Technical University in Eindhoven. So Maria. Yeah, thanks Dirk for the introduction. Um, can I share my screen immediately? Sure. Uh, one second. Yeah, looks yeah. good. Well, let me briefly um, guide you through uh, um, to this project, OIP for NWE. It stands for Open Innovation Photonics for Northwest uh, Europe. And here we are about, um, not about, but exactly 11 partners participating in this project. So we are based in the Netherlands, in Belgium, Germany, France, and Ireland. And we have uh, one associate partner, which is uh, Effect Photonics in the Netherlands. So in this consortium, uh, we have partners from the universities to um, SMEs, uh, to other companies. And I will show you briefly um, which partner is in charge of what and what are we working towards. The main targets are to increase the maturity and scaling of open access in the unphosphide photonic integrated circuits. So this is our first focus. Then the second one, it's uh, to support the SMEs who are looking to use this uh, matured indium phosphide pigs. And finally, as a result of these two, we want to create an open innovation environment uh, for this generic indium phosphide pig technology. And uh, for, for people who haven't heard of generic indium phosphide pig technology, this is, uh, brief concept. So it means that we have different building blocks. Um, I hope that you see my mouse here. Let me do the laser. It means that we have different building blocks here, uh, an amplifier region, phase modulator region, waveguides, polarization rotators, and uh, using this, let's say, predefined uh, elements, we can create something more complex. So this is something where we start from and then uh, this generic photonic uh, platform already exists. And then we're working towards further maturing it and uh, improving the fabrication processes. So where, where does OIP for NWE work? <clears throat> Mainly here in the fabrication and the packaging. So we are focusing, as mentioned before, on uh, improving the maturity, reliability, uh, increasing the yield in the, in the fabrication. And then we have partners who are working on packaging towards the final product. If we would position ourselves in technology readiness level, it would be somewhere between five and seven. Um, so it is between let's say one heat wonder and the mass production, uh, we are um, mainly focusing on increasing the yield, improving the re reliability, which would further then reduce the cost and increase scalability. So all these terms are 
are connected one to another. In terms of fabrication, we are working a lot on uh, improving the epitaxy, increasing the yield and improving re reliability and stability with it. And finally, if we talk about packaging, these are some of the aspects we are focusing on. So we have partner, uh, which is the Freie Universität Brussels, uh, working on uh, tapered fibers because we need these optical connections, but then we also need the electrical connections uh, from the from the pick to the to the package. And Tyndall is uh, working on on the electrical part. Um, we also are working on the thermal management, uh, on the DC, as well as high speed connections. So all of this comes into play when we are talking about packaging inside the OIP for NWE. And finally, something which is uh, interesting for SMEs is the innovation support fund we have here in this project. Um, maybe you have attended some of the previous webinars, so you, you already know what this is about. But if you don't, um, this means that we have a voucher scheme, which is offered to SMEs who have previously experimented uh, and have a design um, in indium phosphide picks. And then we offer a full chain. So we have smart photonics who will do the fabrication of picks once you come with your design. Then we have, we have uh, VUB, who is in charge of external optics design, and we have Tyndall, who is in charge of packaging. So this means that if you uh, would like to gain access to this uh, open, uh, open access pilot line, you can do so. You can apply for this uh, voucher. And if you have a previous design, you can compare it uh, with this one from the pilot line and um, yeah, make, you, make use of this, uh, of this offer, which is already there. But there will be a bit more talk afterwards about this in more details. So yeah, uh, I will end here and then give the word to, back to Dirk. Thank you very much, Maria. Um, I've forgotten to mention it at the beginning. If you've got any questions uh, or comments or remarks or whatever, um, you can use the chat or you can raise your hand if you wanna say something that we can uh, react on that. If not, for example, for the innovation support fund, um, uh, we will have uh, Jürgen van Erbs uh, at the end of uh, this webinar uh, telling you a little bit more about it and uh, the regularities and whatever you need for that. And there are still no question. Then I would hand over to our next speaker. So thank you again, Maria. Moment. And let me start. Start here with this screen. So as I mentioned before, today we've got here Yerma Vida from uh, Photon First. And we want to welcome him again for her to give us a presentation because Yerma comes from uh, Photon First, a relatively new name for a well-established uh, and well-known uh, company with us an expert in measuring technologies. And I would say Yama, um, now he's working for more than two years for Foden First, if I informed correctly and before that, as a researcher. And before that he was research engineer for seven years at the Freie Universität of Amsterdam. And now I say, welcome again, Yama, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Dirk, for this uh, opportunity to uh, to present uh, today in this uh, in this talk. I will share my uh, screen. Uh, 
So hopefully every you can see everything right now. Everything is fine. Yeah, great. Uh, screen. So yes, um, well, my name is uh, Jelmer Weda. In, uh, indeed, uh, I'm researcher at, uh, at uh, Photon uh, First, uh, and we, we measure with light. Uh, we measure the world, uh, and we measure the world uh, with light. Uh, I'm going to tell a little bit how we, we do that uh, today, uh, but let me first tell a little bit more about uh, our, our company. In uh, 2006, our founder, uh, our visionary uh, founder, Pim, Pim Kat, started uh, photonics activities in, uh, in Technobis. Um, so the, he, he invested in, in, a, in a first research uh, branch of uh, uh, fiber optic uh, sensing. Uh, and, and our first system was developed in 2006. And this consists out of uh, free space uh, optics, so very bulky optics. We had uh, big lenses, we have a grating, we have a camera. Um, and then uh, we, we have the first systems uh, made and, and developed. And then uh, just after two years, uh, Pim saw uh, the light of integrated photonics. So uh, Pim, uh, Pim, uh, Pim uh, went to investing into integrated uh, photonics. Um, so this is a great advantage to, to go to uh, integrated photonics. You can make your systems quite smaller. Um, uh, and that's what we, we are doing since uh, 2008. Uh, so ever since 2008, uh, uh, he has invested uh, a lot of resource, a lot of, a lot of resources in uh, in development of these products for the uh, aerospace, medical markets, automotive, energy infrastructure, and high tech uh, markets. Um, in two in first of January from this year, we we split from our sister company, the, which is uh, Technobis. Uh, so we now proceed as uh, Photon First, and uh, we uh, have a very diverse team of 36 uh, people, uh, mostly high, high, highly educated, and we have a very diverse team um, uh, working on, uh, on, on the technology. Uh, so we do that uh, from our uh, headquarters in, uh, in Alkmaar. In Alkmaar, we have our research facilities and also our production uh, uh, facilities. Um, and since uh, quite recently, we also have an office in, in Eindhoven uh, to be very close to our partners, like the Technische, Technische Universiteit Eindhoven. Uh, in Eindhoven happens a lot uh, concerning uh, integrated uh, photonics. So we, we uh, have, have our partners here uh, quite close as well. We're quite close to smart photonics, design houses, and so on. Uh, so we have uh, uh, quite recently a satellite office in, uh, in Eindhoven uh, as well. Uh, in Alkmaar, you still, still can see here on the picture, uh, this is uh, our sister company, Technobis, is on the other side of the building. So we're still also quite close to our, uh, uh, our origin, I would say. Um, well, how does it work, integrated uh, uh, fiber optic sensing and integrated photonics? So we use integrated photonics for advanced sensing applications. Um, we do two things. So we, we use integrated photonics uh, and we, uh, our application is uh, fiber optic sensing. Uh, so here is an integrated circuit. This is really the heart of our system. And for fiber optic sensing, you, you need to have three, uh, three components. Um, so fiber, uh, the, the, uh, the first component to start with is, uh, is a light source. So you need to have a broadband, uh, a broadband light source, which you inject into an optical fiber. So this fiber can be of the, the, the conventional optical fiber, but it's also used for uh, uh, data communications or telecommunications and especially treated. So that's, that's the second component. You, you need to have a fiber sensor. So the, the fiber sensor is specially treated uh, with, with laser radiation that you make a small structure in, in, the, in the fiber. And this uh, structure allows uh, light, a uh, manipulation of, of light. So this structure, uh, when you apply a broadband light source, when you inject light from a broadband light source into a fiber, uh, a small portion of the spectrum, a small band of light or color of light is uh, re reflected back into the fiber and the re remainder of the light propagates through the fiber. Uh, this is what, just one sensor, but you can have a row of sensors in a, in a fiber uh, as well. So you can read out multiple sensors with this uh, as well. Um, the back reflected light, you see, you see it here. This, this is the middle picture uh, that's being back reflected into the fiber. Uh, and we measure that with the, the heart of our system. This is an interrogator uh, circuit. We can measure the, the back reflected wavelength of the light. Um, so what's interesting about this, um, when, when nothing happens to the fiber back rating, so when it's totally passive, there's no, no pressure applied on it, the, the back reflected spectrum is constant. But if you apply, for instance, a uh, mechanical pressure to the, 
to the to the sensor, uh, the, it will stretch a little bit, and it also makes the um, back reflected uh, spectrum shift. So we measure a change in color while uh, applying a pressure on the on, on the fiber, um, and that's uh, that's basically what we we do with our uh, our systems. Uh, so we use integrated uh, photonic circuits for this. Uh, integrated photonic circuits. Uh, well, you can, you can make it very small. You can have uh, hundreds of components uh, made on the on a chip. Uh, it's easier to control a small chip rather than a very bulky, big uh, free space uh, optics uh, system. It enables uh, hybrid integration of uh, optics and electronics, uh, and it's a low power application as well. Uh, fiber sensing, the application itself is um, uh, it's a small size, so that optical fibers are, are just about uh, uh, four times the size of a human hair, for instance, uh, 250 micrometers in diameter, if you take into account the coating. Uh, it can handle a great deal of um, uh, chemicals. It's chemically inert. It's, it's quite safe to use. Um, it's non-conductive non as well, so you can use it in uh, highly uh, high energy fields as well for... for, for uh, uh, for instance, high voltage fields or high magnetic fields or high RF fields as well. So it's quite immune to that uh, as well. Also, uh, optical fibers are very transparent. So you, uh, you can uh, have a very long optical fiber and you, you can measure very remotely. The losses are extremely low. Um, so you can have a sensor very far away from your system and, and still do a very good uh, measurement because the, the, uh, the optical properties of the fiber are, are such that, that the losses are extremely uh, low. Um, with these uh, fiber break uh, 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 gratings, we, we measure strain, temperature, and pressure. So by, by far most, uh, the most uh, dominant effect is, uh, is uh, um, a mechanical effect on, uh, on the fiber break uh, sensor. Uh, so we can measure strain, so we can measure, measure shape deformation, we can me measure shape of, uh, uh, of, of uh, products, we can measure impact, for instance. Uh, and that's the mechanical effect on a fiber break uh, grating. Um, besides the mechanical effect, we can also measure temperature. We can measure um, uh, millikelvin reso resolution uh, with our uh, fiber break uh, gratings as well. We have some applications for this as well. Uh, we have medical applications where we monitor um, cancer treatment. Uh, we monitor the temperature during uh, cancer treatment in, in patients. Uh, and also the, uh, the fiber break gratings are uh, sensitive to, to pressure. Uh, we, we can uh, measure uh, pressure very, uh, with a very high resolution uh, as well. Um, our ambition is to lead uh, innovation towards the, the future of sensing. So this is uh, where we all started in 2006. This is a free space optic systems just after two years, we went to the photonic integrated uh, circuit uh, systems. Uh, we have the Gator series, uh, of systems in, uh, in the, over the last decade. Uh, and right now we are working on to further integrate the electronics and, um, uh, and optical components uh, in, in a smaller uh, unit. So we are work, working on to further miniaturize uh, our, uh, our systems, so, uh, lower footprint, uh, lower energy consumption, uh, and also lower price. We also want to miniaturize the, the, the price, and that's because of the, the technology is, is uh, uh, the technology is maturing right now. Um, and also, uh, when you scale up, the, the price per unit also uh, comes down, um, and it, that's what we, we target for the next uh, uh, next decade. Um, we have uh, we focus on adv advanced applications in demanding markets. So. Um, one of our uh, very proud applications is the Taipei 101 tower. We have uh, systems uh, installed uh, in the Taipei 101 tower. We saw the early signs of an earthquake coming with our, uh, our sensing systems. So for structural health monitoring, we also have other applications. You think of a bridge monitoring and also uh, think of a cable monitoring under, under seas, for instance. Uh, we, we also have uh, systems installed in, in wind turbines for wind turbine blade uh, monitoring to see the, the effect of uh, severe winds on uh, uh, the bending on uh, uh, wind turbine blades. Uh, like I said, we also have medical applications. Uh, we have haptic feedback sensors for, for surgeons. Uh, we, 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 we developed that. Uh, also endoscopy, uh, temperature monitoring inside a patient. Uh, we made a, a strain uh, application system for uh, uh, for lithography uh, uh, from a very famous partner from, from Eindhoven. Um, 
and we are um, also uh, aim on the automotive industry and then, then think of crash testing, uh, but also luxury uh, yachts. Um, also for the uh, aerospace industry, uh, we have a very ambitious uh, project where we uh, monitor the, the temperature the, in aircraft uh, wing during the, the flight. Uh, this is one of our uh, uh, very uh, applications what we're very proud of. So on our website, we, we have some, uh, some success stories uh, about uh, this as well, but also the other stories. So take a look on, on our website to, to read the full uh, success story. For aerospace, we also uh, have applications where uh where we can measure bird strike so bird strike is the effect of while an airplane is, is taking off uh, a bird hits the the, the wing uh, and we also have monitoring systems to uh, uh to measure a bird strike also the the landing gear of, of uh airplane they do get a lot of uh, aggression during uh, the landing so we also have a monitoring system for the for the landing gear uh, system uh, for, uh, for, uh, for airplane as well um, since we uh, we have all uh, this this facilities, so uh, uh, we make this, the systems for, for sensing. Uh, so we, we we have a, a lot of know-how and a lot of equipment uh, to to make uh, uh, photonic integrated sy systems. So besides the uh, sensing systems uh, we sell to our customers, we also offer uh, packaging uh, solutions. So packaging is the process of. Uh, um, uh, making electrical and optical connections uh, to the chip, to the outside world. Uh, what you see here is a, is a package. Here in the middle of, of the package, uh, there's, there's the, the photonic integrated circuit. Uh, this is a wire bonding machine. So what we do with this machine, we make uh, the wire bonds to the, to the electronic circuit, which is the green part. Um, and that's, that's uh, what, what we do as well. Um, and our packaging service, uh, what, what we can offer our, our clients is a, is a full uh, packaging. So we, we can make uh, a chip, we, we can build it in a module for further integration to our, our customers as well. So when, when the chips arrive from the customers, we can do visual inspection. We have highly trained uh, uh, personnel to, uh, to inspect uh, the chips and we have a microscope to inspect these. Um, and then we can pick the, the good chips. So uh, uh, the, the chips can have uh, defects. It can be either dust particles or uh, metallization errors or lithography misalignments. And we uh, uh, filter out all the, all the defect uh, chips uh, while the, the chips are shipped uh, to our, our company. Uh, then the next step after the visual inspection is uh, electro-optical testing. So we, we have developed our own uh, testing uh, capabilities. This, uh, this is uh, a picture of uh, manual testing. We, we uh, take the chip, uh, put it on a chuck here. Uh, here's el electrodes. And also we, we can position an optical fiber at, uh, uh, near, the, near the chip. And here we, uh, we, we can test the chips uh, manually uh, for, uh, for our customers as well. Um, we have a fully automated uh, system uh, planned uh, in this year. So we're, uh, we're hoping to have this uh, device uh, coming to our, uh, to our foundry soon. Uh, but right now we, we're, we're still uh, measuring by uh, by hand, and for some customized uh, applications, we still need to measure by uh, by hand uh, as well. So uh, um, that's, there's lots of expertise here. So if we can measure the electrical uh, characteristics, the, the optical characteristics of a chip before packaging, because packaging is. Uh, um, uh, yeah, that, that is a quite costly process. So the chips needs to be good. You want to ensure the chips you package are actually uh, good. Uh, and the next step in the, in the, in the process uh, is, uh, is dye bonding. So dye bonding is, is, is the process of picking a chip, uh, putting it on a temperature control uh, module inside a, a package, the package housing. Uh, so th that's what we, we do here. So this is the first step where the, uh, the chip has, uh, will be picked from the box. Uh, and will be glued to the to the temperature control unit in in the housing. That's the dye bonding. Uh, that's the first step in the in the packaging uh, process. Uh, we have a, a, a automatic wire bonder as well. That's the next uh, step. We make the electrical connections to the outside the world, so we we can make pull uh, gold wires uh, from uh, from from bond pads uh, of, of the of the pick here, um, but we also can do it this manually, what you have seen in the slide uh, before. This is where you make the electrical connections. And the next step in the, uh, in the manufacturing process is making the, the optical connections uh, to, the, to the chip. Uh, for that, we have the, the fiber uh, aligner, the semi-automatic uh, fiber aligner. And here we solder a uh, laser weld, uh, an optical fiber, 
to the package, uh, which uh, makes the, the, uh, the optical connection to the chip, to the outside world. And then the next step is closing the package. And uh, we, we can also test uh, the, the packaged uh, chip, which is uh, made and calibrate this before uh, shipping, shipping this to our customer or further integrate this into uh, to a system. Um, I would like to acknowledge uh, Interreg for uh, uh, and thank uh, for uh, uh, being the uh, uh, for participation in the validation program for uh, OIP. Um, we we are a, a validation partner, which means we are an early customer of the, the OIP pilot uh, line, uh, and uh, this will by the end of the project result in a demonstrator system we are uh, we are developing. Um, well, that uh, that brings me to. Uh, to the end of my uh, presentation. So uh, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for listening. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, feel free to, to, ask me, uh, to ask me everything. Uh, then I would like to bring back the, the, word, uh, the word back uh, to Dirk. Thank you. Thank you, Yelma. First question, someone who wants to talk. Uh, yes. Uh not Fickle speaking here. I would have a question concerning the, the reduction of the cost. So you showed that the cost of the entire system goes down with an increase in miniaturization, um, but also the cost of the, of the sensor went down. And is the sensor basically the fiber? And, and, and why does the, the, the cost of the sensor goes down with the miniaturization? Uh, thank you for your uh, question. Um, let me go back to the yeah exactly this one to the slides uh, here. Um, yeah, the, um, the, the, the the fiber sensor itself uh, it's also a uh, a thing. Uh, what what needs further maturing? I think I think this technology also needs to uh, to, to scale up. Uh, so uh, that's what what's. Uh, 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 where, where a lot of work is uh, being performed uh, on the, uh, right now is that to, to uh, also uh, maturing this uh, this technology even further. So when this technology becomes cheaper, uh, when, when there's more more demand for this uh, this technology, the the, the cost of uh, paper sensor also uh, will go uh, go down. Okay, I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Tick. Yes, Mr. Mahel. Mahel, is it right? Well, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask, what's the difference between uh, MEMS pressure sensors and and your sensors? Uh, thank you uh, for your for your question. Uh, your, your question is, what is the difference between a MEMS uh, sensor and a fiber break plating sensor? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, then I'll go back to the to the slide here. Um, so the the fiber brick uh, grating sensor. This is uh, uh, this is written in, inside the fiber. So uh, the difference between a MEMS uh, sensor is that uh, you alter, alternate the fiber tip and you make a small structure on this. Uh, so what is different about the fiber brick sensor is that uh, uh, the, the fiber itself uh, will not change. This is an inline uh, sensor. What we uh, we have here. So the, the lights propagating. So you, you just have a fiber, and um, you can ride ride a ride a sensor uh, with, with a laser uh, interference uh, technology. Uh, you, you can ride a sensor in this uh, this fiber. So you can make you can ride a structure. You, uh, so what what you do with the the, the laser lithography for, for fiber break sensors is that you um, um, you, you change the refractive index profile uh, here. Uh, and that, that is the big, uh, uh, big difference is you have an inline sensor rather than, than uh, a MEMS sensor on the tip of, uh, of a fiber. Yeah, but in terms of cost and, and, and size. Um, in terms of cost, I, I cannot uh, not say too much about it. I, I think I, I, I don't know the answer. Um, uh, but in size, I think the size uh, would, would be comparable. Uh, but it, it's the uh, the, yeah, the technology what is what is different, I would say. So um, a, a MEMS uh, a MEMS sensor uh, typically is on the the end of the fiber. Uh, so it, it depends on the the application uh, you need. Uh, I think. 
So we, we focus on fiber break rating uh, sensors. Uh. Yes, thank you for your answer. You're welcome. Another question? I can't see it in the chat, so no one. Ah, that's from Heiner Zwickel again, a question. Uh, do you also consider sensors that are directly integrated in the um, pick rather than in a fiber? Um, yeah, thanks for the, que uh, the next uh, question indeed. Uh, um, that's, that's a possibility as well, indeed. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's probably all I can say about, uh, about this, uh, this question. And there's another question. Is, is there a limit to the number of optical fibers that can be coupled uh, uh, to, the, to the pick? Um, there's, a, there's indeed a, a limit. Um, uh, and that, uh, that de depends on the spectral width of your, of your light source, for, for instance, or the, the selection you made from the, uh, uh, the sensors you, you integrate. So this is limited. Um, but um, yeah, the more advanced you make your system, uh, yeah, the, the more possibilities there are. So in the larger the chip is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, could be. Um, Next question, yes, from Akim uh, Safiri, you hope that's correct, uh, pronounced. How do you manage to distinguish uh, between the measurements due to temperature and strain considering FBG tends uh, uh, to respond to both similarities? Uh, similarly, sorry. Yeah, thank you, that's a, that's a very good uh, question indeed. Um, yeah, we, we can uh, distinguish uh, uh, that as well. So that, that makes the system more, more complex as well. So the data processing, uh, but the, there, is, uh, there are ways to uh, distinguish between strain, temperature and, uh, and uh, pressure. Uh, there are ways to, to, uh, to measure that. So we, we can see that in a difference in response. So in the next from Benjamin Marx, are you considering other fiber optic sensing mod modalities like Rayleigh, Brillouin, Raman scattering? Uh, thank you for the, the question. It's also a very technical uh, question uh, indeed. Um, uh, well, we, we focus on, on fiber optic uh, sensing. So the, the, the products we, we put on the, the market and help the customers uh, with are these, uh, uh, are these, these fiber uh, break rating uh, sensors currently right now. Okay, still another question, someone? If not, then I'm, I would have a last question uh, to you. You are already involved in the OIP uh, for NWE project as a current partner. Um, if there is, uh, and you've told about um, your goals, uh, bring for hybrid integration, bringing the costs down and so rather, uh, what would you say would be the biggest challenge or where do you wanna say we wanna do it in cooperation perhaps uh, to other you know, research institutes, companies or whatever um, that are participating today. So for example, where you can bring you together to someone. Um, it's a good question, uh, Dirk. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, I think that the, the, the biggest uh, challenge uh, right, right now is to, uh, uh, to fu fully prove the, the pilot line and, and to scale up. Uh, so uh, the technology, we have, we have good technology uh, and now it's, it's the big challenge to, uh, to scale up the, the technology. Uh, and also uh, when, when the te technology is maturing, uh, reliability becomes more, uh, more important as well. So, uh, uh, investing in very highly reliable systems, that is also a, uh, a challenge because those measurements are quite, uh, quite tough to do as well. 
uh, but but I think that the, the scaling up is really the the big challenge uh, we uh, we're facing right now. But but also fixing in the, in the, in the OAP uh, project. So we have all the process upgrades. We have the uh, and so on. So we we're upgrading our processes to to scale up uh, right now and preparing for uh, for larger uh, volumes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, um, Yelma. There's no other question. I would say thank you again, Verma, yeah, thank uh, you for today, for giving yeah. us the presentation. And uh, then I want to continue to our next uh, speaker that's uh, mentioned before. That will be Jürgen van Erbs from the Freie Universität uh, in Brussels. And he will tell you a little bit more about the details of our innovation support fund if you are interested in PICS and the production of PICS in the pilot line. So Jürgen, I've seen you are here. Uh, yes, I am. I am here, Derek, but I cannot uh, share the screen at the moment. So can you make Can't me, uh, share it? No. So one second. Where are Interesting. I have to, normally it should be possible. That's yeah, strange. I get uh, the message host to disable participant screen sharing. Oh, interesting. Uh, so, but uh, then we will find a solution for that. Otherwise... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Um, I'm back. Um, uh, Jürgen wasn't in the meeting when I created the co-host, so yes, I was a few minutes late. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Now you should be able to share your screen. Can you test it, please? Yes, that works. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So sorry to all of you. No worries. Okay, there we go. So thanks a lot, to the Dirk, for the introduction. So uh, Marika already uh, uh, introduced briefly the uh, the call for. Uh, uh, applications for the innovation support fund within the OIP for NWE network. So let me uh, give a little bit more explanation on that. So um, there are a couple of requirements, of course, uh, to be able to apply to the uh, to the support fund. So the the main thing is are you an SME located in the Northwest uh, Europe region? And uh, as Marika explained, you should already have uh, let's say a, a first test. Uh, of uh, a, a photonic integrated circuit in indium uh, phosphide um, and to take it beyond uh, proof of concept demonstra demonstration to a trial series, then this call is right for you. We have uh, seven vouchers available, uh, which each provide up to 50 kilo euros of support. And of course, access to the uh, open innovation pilot line which then can cover the design verification uh, to check uh, compatibility of the design with the with our pilot line, as well as uh, the manufacturing of the photonic integrated circuits themselves, the external optics if needed, and the packaging of the devices. You know, so we have opened our call in uh, January and it is open until mid of April. And so there's still time to, uh, to apply. Um, the, the way it would work out is that uh, if you're interested in applying, you should first submit an expression of interest, which is a two pager, um, a, a very short document in which uh, you mentioned the, the, the basic uh, things about the, uh, the project. I will come back to the uh, sheet later on and then uh, uh, follow up with a, a final application uh, which uh, consists of an application form and uh, a proxy NDA such that the uh, evaluation uh, can be done by the selection committee and that uh, evaluation will be done between uh, between the closure of the call mid of April and the announcement of the voucher winners which will be end of June of this year. Yeah. So um, this is basically the, the, the timeline. Um, if we dive a little bit more into details about the requirements for application, I already mentioned that you should be an SME and located in Northwest Europe. So these are the first two points. Uh, and then the, the third point also was already uh, mentioned to some extent. Uh, so you, your uh, product needs to be at a TRL stage of four or higher. Uh, so it, uh, it basically means that uh, you should already have a, a proof of concept type uh, first design ready and then uh, want to scale up that um, that design to, to larger quantities. 
Um, next to the technical feasibility, there is also uh, a need to show uh, the, the business case basically behind the, uh, the, the application as well as the positive impact it might have on your business case. Um, the fifth point is uh, compliance with the de minimis uh, criterion for state aid. Uh, so this uh, has to do with, uh, with uh, uh, you know, uh, not disrupting the markets with uh, the support you get. Uh, so you can uh, get some more details on that uh, if needed at a later point. And then finally, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the, the fully uh, completed voucher application form should be submitted. The proxy and the A should be signed. And then finally, um, there is a requirement that the voucher recipients would agree to collaborate on documenting the use case. So the idea of that is that we, we of course, want to use your uh, your pilot cases as dissemination material for um, for further uh, applicants to the um, to the to the pilot line for later calls. So uh, a little bit more details on the application forms. And so as mentioned, the the, the expression of interest is a very short form containing some uh, contact information on the first page and then on the second page, really a, a very high level description of, uh, of, your, um, of your particular case. And the final uh, application form is a little bit longer, but also uh, very concise. There's not, uh, not too much administration involved here. So again, if we go uh, through this document in a little bit more detail, First page is uh, is a couple of uh, information on on the company and contact details, then uh, uh, some information on the application field, uh, the TRL level of the product, and then the project description. That's basically the, the technical side of things, uh, where uh, you have a short abstract uh, context, um, the uh, the the idea of the uh, of the application, uh, and then of course some target specifications and uh, and, and the way uh, we want to to address the project. And then in part B, we have a couple of questions that are related to the company's business case. And so a target market, market validation, go to market, a unique competitive advantage, financial business plan. Well, of course, we don't need to, to know all the details of your business plan, that's not the goal. But the idea is to, to be able to evaluate also the potential impact on, uh, on the business side. So finally, the, uh, the table on the last page of the uh, voucher application form is, uh, is an important one uh, where, um, you show that uh, this uh, this innovation could either lead to new revenues or to new uh, uh, new jobs um, at your um, at your company. And so uh, that's the kind of prediction of uh, of the impact on the financial side for you. And then finally, the selection criteria. So if you uh, submit such an uh, application form, the uh, selection committee will look at the following aspects when uh, when uh, evaluating your proposal. And the first one will be. Uh, the innovative character of the project, so um, uh, to, to to check whether um, whether uh, the, the 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 project has a, has technical innovation capability. Then the uh, second point is the technical feasibility. So basically, is the is the proposed uh, work plan compatible with the, with the pilot line? Uh, do we adhere to the to the required TRL levels? Uh, how do uh, how do we look at the interfacing of the PIC with the outside world, and so on and so forth? So also again on the technical level, and then there's two uh, criteria that have a, a higher weight. And so the credibility and level of commitment of the company. And so um, there is a, a, a partial financial uh, commitment uh, because there is actually a co-financing requirement. And so of twenty percent up to the, uh, the maximum uh, support of, uh, of 50 kilo euro. And if the, the project size needs to be larger than 50K, it's possible, but above uh, 50K, the uh, commitment, uh, let's say the financial contribution of the company uh, needs to be 100%. Um, and finally, the added value on the business case and potential impact that has to do with, uh, with the questions that we just looked at uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, 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 target market, uh, validation plan, route to market, uh, value proposition, and the, uh, the increasing revenues or new jobs that can be created as a result of the project. So these are the, the main evaluation criteria. Uh, each uh, criterion should be scoring at least two and a half out of five, and the total score should be at least uh, 20 out of 30. And so um, that's the, the threshold for, um, for granting the, uh, the application. So that's it in, uh, in brief. So if you have any more questions, feel free to ask. And otherwise, uh, you find more information uh, on the website. And if you're uh, interested in applying, uh, uh, send us an email at voucher at oip uh, for nw.eu.
Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jürgen. Is there already a question on that? that? If not, you can read it on our website and the link is uh, on uh, the slide, op 4 nweeu You can go to vouchers and you can read all the details and you can download the files Jürgen uh, mentioned. Um, and as he told you, you've got time to the mid of uh, April to send us your proposal. If you've got any question or only an idea, um, you say, I'm not quite sure whether it could be possible to do it or whether it is good to um, try to um, participate in that. Um, don't hesitate uh, to contact Jürgen. He can give you an answer to that and he can help you to bring you through this uh, proposal. So, if there are no other question, um, then I have to say thank you again to our speakers for today. Thank you again uh, to you for participating today. And last words, I can only say if you are working in the pig field, uh, from the participants and you're interested in, in presenting your technolo technological activities there, don't hesitate to contact us. Perhaps we can uh, show it to do this uh, at one of the next uh, webinars uh, here. And for today, I can only say we wish you a successful day and happy Easter. And we'll see us after Easter again to the next uh, web talk and the last words only, stay healthy, no matter what you do. So Very much. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. <laughs>